you guys are probably getting sick of seeing Honda Helix videos, but um, so far everything's pretty much done for the season for my winter projects. Uh, just a quick recap for those of you following. I've repainted all the lower panels, rebuilt the carburetor with a new automatic choke. Just came in today, I got these new side visors. These are the factory Honda parts, not the cheap knockoffs. These cost around $60 a piece, whereas the knockoffs run for about $40 a set. Nothing but the best. New stereo system. built in. Um, oh, what else did I do? Oh, a bunch of stuff. Oh, yes, new power outlet right there on the side. You can't really see it with this camera, but there's a, a plug socket, 12 volts, directly powered off the battery. That way I can charge my phone while the bike is sitting idling or just sitting doing nothing. Added the obligatory uh, Clay Smith uh, Cam's logo. That's the uh, M Mr. Horsepower, I think is the name. That'll add about five uh, so, uh, horsepower. Give or take. All right, so there's that, and that's been that's what I've been working on. Now we got this little doohickey, and uh, I just picked this up today. Um, okay. it took me a while to figure out what it was. So now that I know what it is, I'm intrigued. I think intrigued is the only word I can use for this. Um, because I've actually had one of these used on me before. What we have here is a UV curing light. That is used in the dental business for um, to cure the UV... I believe it's a, like a UV um, adhesive, not adhesive, but uh, material. What we have here is something that you'll probably not normally see on my channel. Um, this is actually a piece of dental equipment. Yes, I decided to become an at-home dentist. And it's uh, so much cheaper that way, you know. I don't know the money I'm going to save by using this device. This is actually something pretty cool. Well, not really. It's interesting. It is a UV adhesive or UV compound curing machine. Um, many of the dental products that are used or that have been used in the past uh, such as amalgam fillings, contain a UV compound, a UV uh, reactive compound. Uh, basically, the material only sets when it's exposed to intense UV radiation. And um, I know that I've, I've had some fillings like that in my, in my mouth over the years. And, uh, and that's what this does. What this machine does is it actually cures the um, the filling using an intense UV light. So that's how much I know about it. Let's see if we can get it to work, shall we? Now this is actually the tip that they use of the probe. And I believe it fits over that. This end goes into the machine. This is really just a fiber optic cable, a fairly thick one. So if I shine this to the light, yeah, okay, yeah. I shine this end into the light, and you can clearly see that light shines right through it. Um, it is keyed, so I'm glad I have the key. The key is how you turn it on, I believe. You're supposed to wear UV goggles when working with a machine like this, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, UV radiation can cause cataracts over time. Doesn't mean that you're going to turn it on and boom, you have cataracts. But 
We're just going to use it uh, briefly for just a few seconds to see if it works. If it does work, I might try to list it on eBay or try to bargain with my dentist. Maybe he'll give me a couple of free fillings. If I give them one of these. Maybe they threw this machine out. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so let's see if it even works. I'm going to plug in all the cool stuff it came with. Looks like... Um, Got our light pipe hooked up. Um, we're going to need to hook up the foot switch so that we can turn the sucker on. Look at that. Even got the foot switch. Nice. This is almost as cool as that uh, Hughes laser that I picked up. It was actually a gift from my father who got it from work. And um, it was a class, I believe it was a, a class 3 laser beam, which is enough to cause severe damage to your skin and or eyes. Um, I ended up throwing that away because I just didn't want it to get in the wrong hands. Um, but yeah, I'm plugging in the foot switch now. You're not missing anything, I promise. Uh, damn it all. Alright, well, whatever. So, the other thing that you use these machines for is, and this is actually one of the reasons why these are quite dangerous, because they're used for bleaching. Um, I'm not sure if they use them that much anymore for that purpose, but in the old days, they would use these uh, before chemical bleaching was, you know, affordable and... Uh, and um, common. But what you would do is you would apply, I believe, a peroxide solution to the uh, to the teeth, and you would put this on bleaching mode, and it would actually bleach your teeth. The problem is the people using these um, sometimes, like in the mall, uh, would, would they'd have these little kiosks. They weren't properly trained, and uh, you know they were causing patient damage. Um, where did the key go? There it is. All right, here we go. I think that's how you turn it on. Oh, there we go. All right. It's doing like a self-diagnostic. Put it on normal. Let's see if this thing works. I'm just going to see if there's any blue light coming out of this, I guess. Maybe I won't be able to see the UV light. The camera will. I don't think it works. Radiometer. Oh, wait. I see. Alright, maybe we have to calibrate it. I think that's what this is for. How do you do that? Hmm. It could be broken too because it wouldn't surprise me. Boost. Maybe the foot switch is broken. You can see UV light, so if it was working, we would know. The surface light's not on.
I do remember the dentist using one of these on me, though. It was, um... I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, I'm just, uh... UV curing your teeth. One point in time, I was a press operator. I think I mentioned this before. I used to run a, um, a six-inch Webtron printing press, and uh, one of the jobs I had to run required me to use a um, one of our larger presses, which was a a, a ten-inch wide press with a um, it had a UV curing machine on it. The job required the use of UV ink. UV ink is pretty cool because it's not cured through oxidization, it's cured through UV light exposure and um, intense light at that. So, um, anyway, I think this is broken. I'm not getting anything out of it. So I'll have to probably check the. Uh, Take a quick look at the switch and see if it's even functional. Um, as it may not. So this actually has some like information on when it was it probably either calibrated or serviced. So I'll take a look inside. Oh wow! What do we have here? Pretty cool. There's not a lot of crap in here, but um. It does have a uh, a UV lamp. And this is what the UV lamp looks like. It doesn't look burned. It's pretty good actually. <sighs> but there's a cooling fan. So the lamp just isn't turning on. Oh, here's a light filter. This is probably how it adjusts the intensity by rotating this filter. Um, got a power supply back there. Really not a lot to uh, not a lot to worry about though. It's a very nice quality fan. Appears to be one of the metal kind. Metal metal frame. Got this cover here. So this is a little a little bit fancier than your typical projector bulb. Um, it's impossible to tell whether it's really burned or not. Without Actually, no, it's not, because it's a filament bulb. It's not an HID bulb, so I can check it for resistance, perhaps. But ultimately, um, <laughs> probably not going to get anything out of this machine. I mean, really, it's not worth a lot of money, so... Uh, I kind of wonder, though, if that switch is broken, and that's why it won't turn on. So I'd have to find the pinouts for it and see what, uh, there could be anything wrong with this. I don't have any diagnostic information. I could look, but what the hell am I going to do with a curing machine? So why bother, right? I still think it's pretty cool, though. Let's see if we can't, uh... Put it all back together again to see, see what the hell's going on. So, put the bulb back in. Control panel, get that hooked up. See what the hell's going on. Without really putting any effort into it. Uh, it looks like it'll operate with the door open. I don't see any uh, micro switches to worry about. Actually, that's pretty insane. Oh, there is a micro switch right there, but we can we can uh, just stick that in there. Okay, let's plug it back in. I am first and foremost a klutz. Let's plug it all back in. Make it rain. All right. I'd really screw with my dentist if I brought this, like, hid this whole thing under my coat, like the this uh, light pipe, and say, "Look, I got your wand." You know, I don't know. Forget it. That was stupid. Cheap.
Cheesy. Cheesy, cheesy. All right. I'm going to use a key to hold that micro switch down, and we're going to plug it back in again. See what happens. Oh, wait. Duh. What the hell am I thinking? Oh my god, I get dumber by the minute. I need the key to turn it on. So, what else can we use? A pen? A pencil? A pencil. That works. Alright. Watch this. I might have to turn it back off if it actually does something. Okay. It's not doing anything. It's just dead. It's not working. It really is. It's broken. Um, something is wrong. There's a temperature sensor in there, I see. That's probably how it turns the fan on, or knows when to turn it on. Checking this uh, for voltage output would be a good way to test the, whether or not there's a circuitry issue. Um, checking the contacts on the switch to make sure they're closing when they're supposed to would be a good way to check, but then I'd have to figure out which contacts they are. Because it's a four contact cable, but probably a simple on off switch. That wouldn't take too much, but I just really don't feel like putting forth the effort at this point in time. Cal. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't work. So, to hell with it, man. <laughs> what happens if I remove the pencil? Nothing. Again, I don't know why. Simple on off switch. Oh well. Mm. Oh well. I guess I won't be able to start my dental practice after all. Oh well. I'm, I already got this machine. Maybe I could have started something, you know? Maybe expand my horizons, become a dentist. But I guess those dreams are dashed. Maybe I could have started a tooth whitening service. Oh well. Pretty simple machine though. I mean, honestly, when it really comes down to it, you've got a UV lamp, um, which is basically just a high output, um, probably halogen or a xenon bulb or some crazy shit. And um, I don't know. I don't know what the what kind of bulb that is. It could be halogen. It could be something else. But you got that high intensity lamp, and then you've got these two filters here, uh, which filter out certain parts of the light spectrum and increase the. Well, basically, you're concentrating the light into just UV, and you can adjust the intensity of the UV output based on which filters in line there. And then you've got a gigantic, really thick fiber optic line right there that goes to the to the wand. That's all it is. And the rest of it is just for power cooling and, uh, and and power output to the lamp. I mean, couldn't be simpler. That's what your dentist's UV light system looks like inside. See, even got a little alarm there. It's pretty nice. So, um, yeah. So if you've ever had amalgam fillings, UV tooth whitening, this is probably the kind of machine they used, and uh, now you know how it works. All right.